passive solar heater. Is it right for you? You keep running that question through your mind, is it really worth it? Is it worth the money? Is it worth the time to take and build? We see a lot of them made out of cans and stuff. You know, passive solar heating system, is it worth it? We'll let you know. Kind of been looking at these passive solar heaters that people have been making out of the, the soda cans on their, you know, putting on their house. And that seems like a lot of trouble. And, you know, I was kind of wondering how good they actually work. So I thought, you know, we have the facilities here. We have the material and the know how to do it. Let's see if we can't make something that's a little simpler to, to build, do some testing with it, see how it works, and then um, then we'll see what happens from there. If one of the first things we have to do is decide what we're going to make it out of. Um, since we're an aluminum shop, and we do mostly aluminum, we had some stuff sitting around, I thought, we'll use aluminum. <laughs> this is what I'm using. It's a four inch piece of channel, thin wall aluminum. And I know a lot of people are using two by fours and wall studs and things like that. I wanted something that would last and uh, not, not rust and, and not go away. We can simply use some etching primer on it and then paint the flat black on there and we've got it made. Then we need to know what size it's gonna be. And uh, what we did for that is, is this right here. Well, first thing I'd do is have a piece of glass or Lexan or something and you know, what could I use? Well, so happened I looked on Craigslist and there was a guy uh, getting rid of some old sliding glass doors that came out of his house. There's four pieces of glass. They were glued together. But I just took the frames off and took the glass out. Got all four pieces of glass for $15. So not a lot there. Obviously, if we use glass in the future and have to buy it, it's going to be more expensive. But right now, we're you know trying to see how cheap we can make the thing and it and just to see if it works. And uh, also at the same time, I'll be doing one for my boys' clubhouse. And we found somebody throwing out old set of shower doors. Now you know just the fact that it's it's a not see-through glass, I don't think it'll affect it at all. And it's just for a little 10 by 10 clubhouse, but we'll be making one for this at the same time and testing it on there. Before we can make our internal pieces, we have to make our frames so it'll fit. What I did is I took the channel and cut it to fit our glass, and then we welded the corners. So as you can see, they're gonna be sealed up. We don't have to worry about water getting in. And then we're gonna lay this sheet in the bottom right here. We'll put it in, put some pop rivets through from the back side and hook it in. There's going to be cross bracing in here. We're going to have some cross braces that you'll use for mounting it um, to the wall and we'll just go from there. Now what I did is I measured the inside of our frame, went over, cut our aluminum, brought it over here to the metal brain. What we came up with is this. Right here. As you can see, rather than lining soda cans up, we're gonna put this long ways into it. It took all of five minutes to bend this. Stick in, bend, flip, bend. So we're gonna use two of these since it was too impractical to pin one at, at one time, and we're just gonna line them up in there. I'm gonna run out, give these a quick paint job. Okay, here's what they look like, all painted, setting in the frame, and uh, obviously we still have to put the insulation in there and put our glass on. I got to thinking, you know, what are we gonna do for the glass? We'll put silicone around, we'll grind these little welds down on the corner flat, put a big bead of silicone around it, set our glass on there, but then there'll be something more. And here it is. We're gonna use a piece of angle. Once the glass is on there, in place, we'll slide this down over the edge. And we have some little self-tapping screws we're just gonna put right in. That'll keep our glass, we'll have it here. We'll have it across the end. 
and that'll keep our glass from being able to come off. And we're going to need some vents going in and out of this thing and just trying to think ahead. I went ahead and got these. I got one bigger one, one smaller one. You can uh, close them off so at night obviously you don't want a draft coming through there. But I thought I would go with two different sizes and uh, put the bigger one at the top, smaller one at the bottom. Uh, since hot air expands, I figure it'll be coming out anyway, but if we can just make a nice easy flow coming out, we can maybe pick up a little velocity with it going in. And it just so happens that this is the size that a, a 12 volt computer fan will fit on and we'll probably put a little solar panel and kick a couple fans on there and see what happens with that too. But uh, we got these, so now I can know what size to make my holes and my duct work to go in. Selfers at home, I would recommend probably doing this in two pieces. It doesn't want to make compound curves and fit in there, but got it in there. Going to pop rivet that in place. But before I do, we need to figure out where we're going to cut our holes for our vents. I'm going to have to make a duct, obviously, this size for the top vent, one to fit the bottom vent. But uh, that's where I'm at now. Then pop rivet this into place and put our insulation in. Well, here it is a new day and I got to thinking about this little project overnight and uh, got to thinking about, I was gonna mount it flat to the wall, like this. Well, if you got your sun coming in it this way, if you actually look at how much sunlight it gets versus if you turn it this way, I decided let's make it lean. So this is kind of what I came up with and uh, welded it up, been doing a little bit of work and uh, got it ready to assemble now so this is going to attach to the wall just up off of the ground and uh, we'll see how it works well as you can see we now have the holes cut for our, our duct work to go in uh, we're going to go ahead and pop rivet this piece into place and then uh, we'll throw our insulation in and hopefully button it up. Let's get that started. Well, that pretty much finishes up the drilling for the rivets. That's all our Clecos. And uh, now we can start putting the rivets in the thing. 